what is the difference between the methods fit transform and fit underscore transform an interview question and also very very important concept from usability of machine learning point of view if you want to use machine learning to predict something in real world very very important concept to know let's see with some simple examples so guys we will try to understand all the details of this simple yet very very important concept okay we will understand what is the need of this doing this fit fit transform and fit underscore transform then some fundamentals okay then we will do some python hands on line by line to understand how this works and then i will leave you with some conceptual questions so that you give me answer of how you will implement your knowledge on those aspects okay first of all what is the need of these methods so these methods are used for multiple purposes but we will take a simple example let's say you have a employee data okay employee data of an organization and you want to train a regression model in your regression model there is one column called age of the employee and other column called salary of the employee so salary is your response variable age is your independent variable okay in age you can have age like 21 or 60 or let's say 45 or let's say um, i can say 31 right these kind of ages you can have salaries you can have some values okay now from your machine learning understanding you know that for some of the um, machine learning algorithms to name some let's say knn or if it's a k-means clustering or even in regression problem it is highly advised that you must scale your data what is the meaning of scaling your data the meaning of scaling your data is the original features will take a new value okay so when you do a scaling of age column what you will get as output is age scaled okay age scaled okay this 21 the scaled value of age may look like i'm just giving a, giving an example 0 0.2 this 60 might look like 0 0.58 this 45 might look like 0. Point, let's say 3 or this 31 might look like 0 0.1 not 0 0.1 it will be more uh, 0 0.3 because 21 is 0 0.2 right so i'm just giving you some example of how this can look like okay but what is the use of this so any distance based algorithm will make use of this and the learning process for that will be easier so how you do scaling you just call something known as standard scalar or mean max scalar is another scalar but we will take example of standard scalar to keep it simple so this this comes from skill learn okay this comes from skill learn you import this and what it will do is it will take all your axes okay it will take all your axes axes means this these values okay and it will employ a formula saying x minus mu by sigma okay x minus mu by sigma what is the meaning of mu and sigma mu is the mean of your population which means all these four numbers and sigma is the standard deviation of all these four numbers so how this value will come i had put randomly but how this value will come is 21 minus mean of all these four divided by standard deviation of all these four so if you go to a scale and documentation just quickly i will show you here uh, i had opened that see here z is equal to x minus u by sigma where mu is the mean of training sample mean false and s is the standard deviation okay now one important thing to understand here is how do you how do you do this transformation okay so for doing this transformation what you will do is you will just import that standard scalar and i will say let's say sc is equal to standard scalar okay so i, I mean to say i'm importing that function okay sc is equal to a standard scalar and i will just say sc dot fit sc dot fit and my age column my age column okay at the moment you say sc dot fit right transformation does not happen okay so if you say sc dot fit then your values will not get transformed to the new values what will happen then the arguments will get computed which means to transform it to the new value you need this mu and sigma right so this mu and sigma will get computed when you say sc dot fit remember this guy is very very important thing i will tell you why later okay what happens when you call fit method when you call fit method the parameters to transform gets computed okay and when you say sc dot transform using that 
using that, uh, you know, whatever is the output of that fit, right? SC dot transform, then it will actually transform your values. So when you say fit, just the parameters get computed. When you say transform, it will actually transform your values. And when you say fit underscore transform, then both the things happens, okay? It will calculate the parameters and it will transform as well. Now, all this is theory, okay? But why I'm telling you this topic is very important is, let me try to show you how it happens in Python first. So I'm importing from sklearn.preprocessing, I'm importing a standard scalar as I told you. I'm just having one column here. If you see guys, age is equal to numpy.array, I'm having three ages, 16, 40, and 72. And you have to give in this format, otherwise it will not take, okay? One column only. Age I'm taking. Now manually, I'm computing the age here. So np.mean, I mean uh, average here. np.mean, 42.66 is the average of age. Standard deviation is 22.9395, okay? Now I'm initializing a standard scalar here. If you see here, initializing a standard scalar, and then I am fitting. Fitting means I am I am not transforming the variables. I am just computing the parameters. What are the parameters? Mean and standard deviation. So mean should be exactly same as the previous mean. So 22.93 should be here. See here 22.93 standard scalar is giving. Scalar and this is this is mean. Sorry, this is this is uh, your standard deviation because it's square root of variance. Okay, square root of variance is your standard deviation. So 22.93 should be the standard deviation. Okay, and mean should be 42.66. So if you come here, mean is 42.66. Both these things are computed. Now, if I go ahead and do a manual computation, if you see this is from the sklearn and the bottom one is manual computation. So this is from the sklearn I am transforming. If you see, I'm just saying transform. Okay, and here I'm manually computing. So this is X minus mu by sigma, okay? So both these values are equal, which means whatever uh, library is doing, whatever we are doing, both are equal. Now, one important thing to understand here and my question to you guys, suppose you are doing training and prediction both. So in prediction also, you will do transformation. My question to you is, will you use the same parameters to transform? So here, scalar is your scaling object, okay? In your prediction model, will you use the same scalar and do dot transform or you will create its own you know scaling um, object you can say what what does make sense according to you that is my first question to you okay and how you can do that i have just written a code here you can just put it in your disk and reload the object and do the transformation in your prediction pipeline okay that you can do not a problem you can store this using pickle Take it in the prediction pipeline, do the transformation, no problem. That was my first question to you. If you guys give me some answer, I will tell you what is the right answer, okay? Now come to second use case, TF-IDF. In TF-IDF guys also, you will do some kind of fit transform. So if you see here, this is my corpus, okay? Simple corpus, I am initializing TF-IDF and I am calling fit underscore transform, which means both the things together, fitting and transforming both. Now this vectorizer is storing the information of my parameters of fitting. Okay, vectorizer is storing the information of my parameters of fitting. My question to you is, so this is how X will look like, okay? Uh, your transform data will look like this. Obviously all the words it will take and assign a TF-IDF number based on the document, okay? My question to you is, if you are doing a prediction, then will you take the same vectorizer for making a TF-IDF vector or you will initialize the TF-IDF vectorizer separately and do the fit underscore transform separately. So my question to you here is what makes more sense? Okay. See you all in the next video guys, wherever you are, stay safe and take care.